<laughs> He's quite a sizable dude, isn't he? he Out is of Boston great. Mass at 285. Oh, man. Pete Austin coming in with uh, Danny Davis alongside. Says, Danny. Have I got a surprise for you? Yeah, I'll surprise bet. surprise for Brother Dave. These idiots over here and those rednecks out there. I got a surprise for okay. everybody. Got a match coming up, Danny. Well, I know we got a match coming up. And it's going to be an easy match for my man Pete Austin. You know, last week, Sonny King was out here. He told you what he was going to do around here. And to listen to the man. I got a telegram here from him. Not and it on, says, we're gonna I am, no, we're going to get to the match, but let me say what I got to say. This is very important. I am a private first class in the King's Army. The King's Army. Now, that's Sonny King, not that other jerk running around here. And you people out there understand that. And Sonny King says, now, Sonny King says that if I do good, I'm going to get promoted. And if I get promoted, I make money. And baby, with this man right here, with this man right here, Pete Austin, we're going to make money, and we're going to do it. Okay, Dad. And Tyler, yourself, you're going to, you got a problem, boy. You got your work cut out for you today. Why don't you get on up to the ring in there, and we'll get, get the match the going. Ring. We're going to take care of what we come out here to take okay, care of. Okay, fine. Just move in there. Danny starting the motor mouth of his. And, uh, okay, Dave, I think we're up there and ready for the introductions. Let's get at it. All right, this is going to be a one-fall 15-minute time limit match. Introducing... On the left of your screen, at 285 pounds from Boston, Massachusetts, Pete Austin. Going against him in this match, at 265 pounds from New Orleans, Randy Tyler. This match will be one for 15-minute time limit. Referee, Jerry Calhoun. Okay, Tyler, we haven't seen on championship wrestling. Uh, he comes in carrying a lot of weight himself. We're ready for bell time, and here it goes, David. Underway, a couple of big ones in there. Pete Austin with about a 20-pound weight advantage. Randy Tyler back onto the ropes. Referee Jerry Calhoun trying to get a break. Austin not uh, too quick about breaking, and Tyler being very careful on that break. Make sure Austin didn't plug him while he was still back on the rope. Randy Tyler. Taking Pete Austin to the canvas time and time again. Private first class Danny Davis seated at ringside there. Tyler working the left arm. Pete Austin back into the corner. Referee Jerry Calhoun calls for. Gets clean break. Randy Tyler back to the center of the ring. He waited. Takes Austin to the mat again. Got a bar on his left arm. Austin raked him right across the eyes. Two arm across the back of the neck. Tyler's head slammed into the turnbuckle. Tyler came out of there. Right hand flying. He popped Pete Austin into the midsection and dropped him down on the mat. What I saw a fist from Pete Austin here a minute ago, too, Danny. That's true. Referee Jerry Calhoun will uh, keep an eye on that. If he sees the fist doubled, he'll warn him to keep him open. Back on the ropes, Randy Tyler. Pete Austin. That did appear to be a forearm. Tyler. Down on one knee. Pete Austin putting the pressure on the shoulder. Good move. Gets Austin off his feet. Breaks the hold. And Randy Tyler comes up with the arm bar on Pete Austin. Tyler asked for referee Jerry Calhoun to check with Austin on possible submission. Austin says, nope. Not giving it up. Pete Austin back on his feet. Forearm across the back, double forearm. Come on, man. Oh, Tyler bounced into that top turnbuckle hard. 
Pete Austin with Tyler in the air. He body slams it. Austin with a boot. Cover by Austin. Count did not, well, maybe a one count. Referee Jerry Calhoun signals he did get a one count, but that's all. Three and a half minutes gone in this one. Tyler off the rope with a right hand. I'm going to make a, a comment, Dave. Uh, I noticed Danny Davis cheerleading down here. I think he finally found his right vocation. He's a cheerleader, <laughs> boy. He's right. really is running that mouth. Oh, Tyler. He flew into it. Drops down on the mat. Davis up on the apron. That's it. Jerry Calhoun says, ring the bell. <laughs> Davis jumped up on the apron. Tyler saw him coming. You've got him disqualified. That's what's the matter right there. You can sit in the chair. Okay, Danny, you got him disqualified. Just be... Randy Tyler uh, coming up with a win out of that one yes, on the disqualification. Yeah, okay. Take him on out. 4.05, the time on it. Four minutes, five seconds. Right. To Randy Tyler. We're going to see if we can get Randy. Uh, oh, hey, Randy. Randy, before you go, we haven't had a chance. want to welcome you to Championship Wrestling, man. Uh, Thank you. I'll tell you one thing. Uh, you started out with a big one and sure made an impression with Pete Austin who came in here with the assistance of Danny Davis to try to put you under. Uh, I'd like to know a little bit about your background. Where you been, what you been doing? Well, I've been traveling extensively recently. Uh, I spent a lot of time in Oklahoma, out on the West Coast and uh, around that part. Uh, you know where the money's at is the belts. And I heard to be a top contender for any national belt or any world belt, this is the place to start. I heard the competition in this area was the best. Yeah. Well, apparently just proving it is good here. It's very good here. In order to make a lot of money, there's got to be some good competition. That's what I'm here for is competition. Well, Randy, i got to well, say, you. we're delighted to have you here. Good luck to you, and we'll be seeing you later on on Championship Wrestling. Randy Tyler uh, coming in for his first appearance on Championship Wrestling. Kind of an impressive guy, yes, too. Wow. Well, he so well we hear great things out of Oklahoma out there where they've got some tough wrestling, too. And uh, Tyler came in highly, highly recommended. Okay, we got some more wrestling action coming up. We're going to get back to it in just a moment. It's very interesting to see in this the progress of these guys. And you're going to get a chance because you've seen them start right from the very beginning and you're going to follow it all the way. When we began this uh, match, uh, Tommy Gilbert, uh, Buddy Wayne came out with his son, Ken Wayne, uh, and was sitting over at ringside. Tommy came out, and uh, he went over and said something to Buddy Wayne, and, and, and he came over, he got outside the retaining rope that they have around the ring at, mm -hmm. the, at that particular facility, and uh, came over there and said, can I sit down? And I asked him, I said, what in the Sam Hill did you say to Buddy before the match over there? And Tommy said, I told you once before, you lay a hand on my kid, and I'll bust you right in the mouth. Uh, a few more words to that effect, I can tell you. And so we're looking at Eddie Gilbert on the left and Ken Wayne down on the deck comes back up. The, the match was a very interesting match. It started out good, fine, scientific, clean match in there. Both of these guys were going at it. Put right up to the head from Ken Wayne to Eddie Gilbert. They gave and take and gave and took and just absolutely were trading it off hard and heavy. Now you stay tuned. That is uh, Jerry Calhoun, the referee. Yeah, I got my, my battles out of sequence. Yeah. <laughs> both Down these, on a deck. Good shot from Eddie Gilbert. Both of them youngsters, both with a lot of desire. They got to, Boy, I still, tell you, they got a lot, a lot to learn, learn. Yeah. and you got that for a fact, but don't think both of these guys just absolutely don't stir it up and want to go every minute of it, and the crowd just loved this one. This was a real ball. Good forearm, coming straight back, double leg dive from Eddie. Takes uh, Ken down, but couldn't get a count on him. Right straight back in, rolls him over. Gets him in that jackknife, count of one and a half. 
Ken kicks his way out. Determined. Ooh, he fired a right, and Eddie Gilbert comes right back on. Then that's when they started turning it into a real straight slugfest. They were just beating each other from one side of that ring to the other. Real brawl. Ken Wayne right now in the black tights, Eddie in the uh, shorter light tights. And right there is Buddy Wayne. Keep an eye. Bam! And right away, you saw a little blur around the side. There goes Buddy Wayne roaring back through the cow. The reason he's running is that Tommy Gilbert was running right after him. And <laughs> Tommy going after him. Boy, he chased him all the way back into the dressing room. He was uh, making good his situation. The result here was that uh, Ken Wayne ended up getting a win over Eddie Gilbert in there. Obviously, we had uh, an opportunity to see exactly what led up to the situation that Ken ended up, but it was a win for Ken Wayne. The official winner in that bout was Ken Wayne. It was uh, some kind of a scrap, too. Okay, Dave, before we get into more action, what do you say we take time out? Take a look around the territory and right, see what's got happening. Lots okay. of action coming yep. up uh, this week as every week. It all begins tonight. Eddie Marlin's going to be joining us here in about uh, one and one half seconds. Hello, here is Dave. Eddie right here. Eddie, uh, tonight over in Jonesboro, Arkansas, i got a six-man tag match coming over there tonight. Expecting a real wild night in Jonesboro tonight. The six-man tag will be two out of three falls. Lola, Tommy, and Eddie Gilbert, Latham, Ferris, Danny Davis have a match with Coco Ware and Ron Bass. There'll be three other big matches. All right, that's in Jonesboro on the west side of the river. On the east side of the river tonight, there's wrestling in Greenfield, Tennessee. Got two big tag matches there tonight. Dundee and Jerry Bryan will take on Hans Schroeder and the Gestapo. Pete Austin will take on Bob Owens. And then Dallas Montgomery and Bob Owens will take on Ken and Buddy Wayne. Okay. Big night in Greenfield. Yeah, Thursday night, there's wrestling coming up over in Forest City, Arkansas. That'd be Forest City's biggest night ever. It's a six-man tag match, a four-man tag match, and four other matches. And I'll say again, Lance Russell will be there. In Forest City Thursday yes. night. Then Jerry, Friday night. Let me read yep, some of the okay, names sure. Forest City. Jerry Lawler, yeah. Bill Dundee, Jerry Jarrett, Wayne Ferris, Larry Latham, Danny Davis, Ken and Buddy Wayne, Tommy Native Gibbon. You wow. name them, they'll be there. That is a big card over in Forest City Thursday night. Friday night down in Tupelo, Mississippi. We're going to take a look at the brawl from a couple of weeks ago in Tupelo a little bit later. But, uh, That's right. There's 14 men on that card down there Friday night. A big card for Tupelo. A six-man tag match. Jerry Lawler, Jerry Jarrett, Bill Dundee, Wayne Ferris, Larry Latham, Danny Davis, Tommy Needy will be there, Ken and Buddy Wayne. Friday night in Tupelo, I'll be in the ring refereeing the Oh, we are, right? That'll be worth going down there to see you right there, Eddie. Also, one week from tonight, not tonight, now one week from tonight, there's wrestling in Oxford, Mississippi. Six matches on that card. It seems like it's just big nights everywhere this week. Six matches down there is Tiny, Tommy and Eddie, Eddie Gibbert, the Gestapo, Hans Schroeder, Coco, Jerry Bryant, Ken and Buddy Wayne. Okay, very good. Thank you, Eddie. Remember tonight, wrestling in Jonesboro, Arkansas, and in Greenfield, Tennessee. Big matches coming up in both places. Lots of good action. Thanks for uh, coming by and telling us what's Dave. going on, Eddie. Let's see. Right now, we're going to take a break, and then we'll be back with more wrestling action for you in just a moment. Stand by. Here they are. Tommy Gilbert and son, Eddie. Tommy, always good to see you. Eddie, uh, the situation, I, I know one of the happiest things of your life was uh, the interest that Eddie took in the ring and following in the, in the footsteps, and it must have been a, a real thrill when you um, started working together as a tag team, actually in the ring, but it's kind of taken a little sour note as jealousy uh, has kind of worked its way in from another fa father's undine. You're right, Lance, and a lot of times things like that happen, you know, and nobody can be any prouder of their kids whenever they want to do something, they see them do their best. But, you know, Buddy... His, uh, man, he, he's become unreal, you know. I couldn't believe that the man could be like this. But I want to tell Buddy one thing, since he's looked like he's turned over a new leaf and he don't want to be the man that I thought he was. Buddy, I'm telling you straight to your face now, man. You told me not to call you Hog Jaws. I'll call you Hog Jaws or anything else that I want to any time, day of the week that I want to. And I'll tell you what, man, whenever we get in the ring, I told you not to lay a hand on my kid. I told you that I'd beat your brains out if you did. And that's exactly what I'll do because we're going to be in there, buddy, and whenever we do, I'm going to do just exactly that. I'm going to deflate them jaws. 
And they could be a lot of you. They could be deflated too, buddy. But the main thing is, baby, I just want you. That's all. And as far as your kid goes, I don't want to lay a hand on him. I'm going to do to him what you should have done 10 or 12 years ago. I'm going to pull his tights down and paddle his butt real good and teach him a little manners. Well, it's obvious that uh, being too father. Okay. Hey, buddy. No fights. Let's. No, no fights. No, no. Uh, Lance, no. After what happened in this match recently, I've been doing a lot of thinking. I don't want to come out here publicly. I want to apologize first to you, Lance. We've been friends for a long time. I've done something that was wrong. I want to apologize to the people in the studio, also the people that's watching it, and most of all, I want to apologize to Eddie and Tommy. Because what I've done last week, uh, I just got carried away. The most important thing to me was Ken winning. And what I did was wrong. And uh, what I want to do, Tommy, just, just forget what happened. And I apologize to you now. And just forget the matches that we got coming up. Just forget them. Just, I'd, I'd like to just cancel a match. Uh, I, think Buddy, I want to tell you something. You said forget the match. No, we won't forget the match. Eddie and I will be out there to wrestle. And that's exactly what we'll do. But until Tommy, the first time that you make a move, buddy. And I'm telling you now, right to your face, I'll beat your brains okay, out if okay, you lay oh, I just, I want to forget what we've done. Just shake in, just forget what I've done. Yeah. I'll shake in, okay. you, but I'm telling you now. It's, that's uh, exactly it. We'll see you in the ring, buddy. Okay, well, the... Uh, Mm. Come on, Eddie, break it up, man. Hey, you guys save that for the ring. Come on. Buddy Wayne is handcuffed. Tommy Gilbert over to the ring post over there. Come on. Let's get this thing stopped out and get somebody out here. The weight with Tommy Gilbert handcuffed over to the ring. The Waynes. That's a great apology. That's all I can say. Can we get somebody out here to get this thing stopped? The Waynes pounding away on. Eddie Gilbert while Tommy Gilbert, I can't help it, Tommy. I can't get the things undone. He locked them on here. Hey, come on, buddy. Just get out. You guys get out of the ring. Why don't he... Okay, buddy. You're asking for it. Bust it. Tommy... Coco Warren and Dallas Montgomery coming out here, and Buddy Wayne shoulder blocked them before they ever got in the ring. All right. Hey, Tommy, I can't get him undone. He's got him locked around there, man. There's nothing I can do about it. Comes Randy Tyler. Out. Good. Get him out of here. Yeah, just get on out of here, buddy. That's Randy can. Get him out of here. Okay. Tommy Gilbert. I'm trying to see. Will that will that key fit in the handcuffs in there? It won't fit. In there. Hey, Jerry. See if we can get somebody to help get that thing out of there. Yeah, see if, see if that key, if you got a key that might work in there. Randy Tyler and uh, Coco and Dallas helping uh, Eddie Gilbert out of there. Huh? Yeah. Okay, I'll tell you what let's do. Let's take a break and then we're going to be back and uh, uh, we'll, we'll have some ring action. In just, we'll be back in just a moment. Mid-South Coliseum will be open until 5 o'clock today. You'll be able to get the advanced tickets. In addition to that, all day on Monday, you'll be able to get your tickets before match time. 
And some excellent match action. It's going to be 8 o'clock is the bell time. We hope maybe you'll get on there for the opening bout, which will be a tag match. It'll be interesting, too. As Randy Tyler, you saw him a little bit earlier, and Steve Regal will be going against the German team of Hans Schroeder and the Gestapo. That'll be our opening tag match in there. That will be followed by a single match. That is, uh, unfortunately for Dallas Montgomery, is the way you get experience. That is, you go in against a big guy that weighs 285 pounds out of Boston, Massachusetts, Pete Austin. Austin and uh, Montgomery going at it. A single match, and we'll be interested in seeing. We saw a flash of him just a moment ago. Coco Ware will be back in here, and his problem is going to be facing 290-pound Ron Bass. That should be some kind of a bout. Speaking of bouts, mm, boy, I don't know about what kind of wrestling match, but I can tell you one thing. If Tommy Gilbert ever gets some can cuffs off of there, Buddy Wayne better be looking out. They're going to be meeting in a father-son tag match. It'll be uh, Buddy and Ken Wayne going against Tommy and Eddie Gilbert, and that should be a dandy down there. The final match is going to be a return match uh, between the teams of Wayne Ferris and Larry Latham and Jerry Lawler and the superstar Bill Dundee. This one uh, is the... Uh, final big main event down there. As a matter of fact, the card is full of it. It all happens Monday night right down at the Mid-South Coliseum. And the action should be something else, starting right from that opening bell with a tag match going at 8 o'clock. So you be sure and get your tickets in advance. Coming out right now will be uh, Wayne Ferris and Larry Latham around their belts being the uh, Southern Tag Team Championship belts. Uh, yeah. Action time coming up Monday in there. I, I couldn't help but notice one thing. Um, there's no uh, return of the Southern Tag Team Championship uh, match in there. You guys wanted a fight. Uh, you had a little battle in Tupelo. I never thought I'd see that thing where the battle, and we're going to be taking another look at it in a little bit. I never thought I'd see that one top, but you got a fight last Monday night. And, brother, when you went flying out of there, I think you had just about all you wanted, a Lawler and Dundee. A fight, Lance Russell? What are you talking about, Etzel Face? That wasn't a fight. We whipped them boys up and down the ring. We whipped them all over the aisles. We whipped them out the front door. We whipped them every way we could. Left them land, just like a chicken killing. And you call it a fight? Oh, come on, that wasn't no a way. fight. That isn't what wasn't. happened. You know, you guys went roaring out of there, and you were glad to be able to get out of that. Them Coliseum. geeks, Lawler and Dundee, we put more lot knots on their head than Carter's got peanuts. That's exactly what we did to them Monday night. Yeah. We left them land. Uh-huh, you left <laughs> them land. They were the, they were the hey, lively. What? Who's got the belts? Who's got the belts, Lance Russell? Tell me. He's got the Southern Tag belt. We're the champions. I know one We're thing. We're the cream of the crop. You didn't Mother put them up this coming Monday night. There's no title match in there. You didn't put any belts up against Lawler and Dundee. You ended up in a non-title bout, and I want to make. Well, that I, I can clear. tell right now you're a stooge for Lawler and Dundee. I can see that right now. Stooge for anybody. I'm just making an observation. It would indicate to me maybe you're a little afraid to put them up. You you got them at the moment. You're going to rely on that 30-day routine of defending your uh, titles in there, and you won't put the belts up. Is that <laughs> Come the kind on, Larry. Of comment that I don't I want to answer any stupid questions. Yeah, answer any stupid questions. That's no stupid questions. You're just going to try to sit behind that 30-day routine. Okay, they got it back together again, and we got our tape all uh, set up. You take time out with me, and we're going to be back right after this, and we'll have some more big action for you, a fight. Last week, I apologize for the middle section, but it is, let's see, the most requested piece of uh, action that we have had in a long time. Tupelo, Mississippi, Jerry Lawler, Bill Dundee against Wayne Ferris, Larry Latham. Here it is. It's eight minutes. Right. It's Dundee in his run out now. Lawler comes in and exchanges the favor on Ferris. Latham back in. Billy a real mess. They have banged on him and beat on him. Going after Dundee. Third fall, remember that. Oh, Billy nailed him once. But Latham and Ferris both in, and here comes Lawler. Jumps over Ferris to get to, Dun to uh, Latham. Knocks him right off the ring apron. There he's back at it. The 
And Dundee caught in the crossfire over near Latham and Ferris's corner. clothesline on Billy and there's a cover one Lawler comes in at the nick of time we're running out of time on our championship wrestling I sure hope that we're going to be able to get all of this bout in Dundee coming back slams Latham head to a turnbuckle there's Lawler in now all four in covering Ferris but Calhoun trying to get Lawler to stop beating on Latham outside the ring and Dundee trying to get the referee's attention Ferris comes up from behind and nails him going to his tights he may have had something in his hand backdrop sunset flip but no referee. Here comes Calhoun being held by Latham. Latham going back in. Drops on Dundee with the elbow and Lawler pulls the referee back to help his partner out. Billy in the center of the ring. Count of one, two. Did he get three? The referee's signifying ring the bell. He got a three count. And he is going to call a pin. Yeah, I know. Our time's running out. The referee, in fact, is awarding the belts to Latham and Ferris as the new Southern champions. Waller nailed with a belt. Dundee grabs a belt. Slams Ferris. Oh, Dundee hit him right in the face. It is a brawl in the center of the ring. The referee, who was abused outside of the ring, let's be fair to him, by both Latham and Lawler, got in and gave a count on Dundee with Latham covering, got a three count, and the belts were awarded to Latham and Ferris as Lawler and Dundee grabbing the belts back are pounding on Latham and Ferris. Trying to get it stopped as the referee and having no success. Lawler bleeding where he was nailed with that belt. Ferris. Latham, the referee is down again. A wild melee going on in the middle of that ring as Lawler and Dundee with those belts jerked away from Latham and Ferris. What you're looking at is the wildest fight we've seen. Latham and Ferris and Dundee and Lawler in the concession stand, all four of them bleeding, pounded each other. Lawler, ooh, fired a gallon jug. They're banging away. Watch out, Mike. Dundee with Latham and Lawler with Ferris. Oh, there's mustard all over us. I hope it didn't get in the camera. The referee trying to get him stopped. Dundee right on top of Latham right below us. We are on the stairs leading down to the concession stand. What a brawl! I've never seen anything like it. Now they're trying to get somebody in to help stop this thing. This is just totally out of hand. Latham and Ferris, Waller and Dundee in the concession stand at the Tupelo Sports Arena. 
sprawling all over the concession stand. A gallon bottle had been thrown, glass on the floor. Waller slams Ferris with a stool and again Waller rattles a pan around Dundee on the far side being stomped on the concrete can you get it with Latham in 27 years of it I've never seen a battle like this and Lawler trying to be strangled by Ferris while Dundee with a mop wailing Latham. Promoter Jerry Jarrett, although he is not a promoter here, trying to get him to stop. He's got Dundee separated. Them having been racked up by that mop handle, Dundee going after him. It's just a street brawl. Jerry Jarrett with referee Jerry Calhoun. Jarrett trying to get it all stopped. Dundee picks up a table. Everything broken up. They're falling all over. Mustard everywhere. I tell you, such a brawl I don't think I've ever seen anywhere before. And we had, we just had so many requests for it, so much conversation about it. Some folks missed it, wanted to see it. Some saw it, wanted to see it again. And there it was. I, uh, the statement mustered everywhere was no exaggeration. Oh. Primarily, it was all over that hot dog Wayne Ferris. Yeah, man. Yeah. That's, where That's true. As a matter of fact. Okay, we got bell time coming up yeah. here. We got a big match. Right here on Studio Wrestling, Ron. Come Madison. here, Russ. Well, I want to talk to you, man. Ron, we've had enough talking. How about you? Hey, you didn't understand. Break? I didn't ask. I hey, said, come here. I want to talk to you. Hey, all right. Come here, Russ. First of all, I saw I couldn't help but sit back there watching the monitor. That looked like a typical Saturday night back home at Joe's Bar. But now I'm going to tell you something else, Russell. Since I've been in the Mid-South area, I have met and beat everybody that you've got. It seems that if I'm the best, why hadn't people come up and gave me titles? You know, you just recently had a battle royal here. Who won the battle royal, Russell? Okay, you won. Who won it, Russell? You won the battle. That's right, I run it. Usually, it takes me a matter of two or three months to beat everybody in the territory. But you know, this past week, I wasn't only in a battle royal here in Memphis, which I won and beat 21 men. I had one in Louisville. I had one in Evansville, and I won every one of them. I beat 21 men three nights in a row. Now, does that, you think that ought to give me a title shot? Do you think the promoters, they ought to come running up to us, hey, Bass, it's your time, we want to give you a title shot. Now, Lance Russell, when I came to this area, I told you I won the Southern Heavyweight Championship, and that's exactly what I want. But no, Robert Fuller, the big long neck, you know he reminds me of a crane in a wool break, boy, he's looking around, where's Bass at, where's Bass at? I want to know where Bass is, I don't want to wrestle the man, because I'll lose my title. Hey, shut up, Russell, I'm talking right now. When I get done, then you can talk again. This is not your interview, it's mine. Tell you something, Robert Fuller, you're the Southern Heavyweight Champion, but it's just be a matter of time. All we got to do is get your name on a line, get it on a contract and step in the ring one time. I'm not talking about maybe wrestling you once and filling you out and knowing about you. Up. No, Fuller, I'm going to wrestle you one time and I'm going to beat you for the Southern Heavyweight Champion. Now, I'm telling you people right now, it's not brag. In fact, you can make buck on it when the bass man tells you he's going to be the Southern Heavyweight Champion. You better believe it. And this is just all we got to do, Russell. Let's put the name on the line. You did a good job, boy. That's all you got to say? You Please get the ring. Fine. Let's get up to uh, Davey in the uh, introduction for this match. Dave? This is going to be a one-fall, 15-minute time limit match. Introducing a 232 pounds from Centerville, Ohio. On the right of your screen, Bob Owens. Going against him from Pampa, Texas. At 290 pounds, Ron Bass. This is a one-fall, 15-minute time limit match. Referee Jerry Calhoun. Well, I got to tell you, we got we got the United Nations debaters. That's all we got. Davis, Ron Bass, everybody wants to talk. Let's watch him wrestle. All right. Well, he had his say a moment ago. He's in there against Bob Owens. Bass, heavy favorite in the match, no doubt about it. 
He has uh, he has won some matches. It's a tough one since he's been in the area. Bob Owens tangled in the top two ropes. Ron Bass not too interested in letting the referee get him free. That's finally out of the ropes. Bass oh, with a suplex drops into the mat. Bass continuous talking all the way through the match. There's the stampede. One, two, and three. That is going to be it. And Ron Bass with the stampede gets the win. Time on it was only 48 As I seconds. Said, only one time is all it's going to take, Fuller. 48 seconds the time on it. The official winner of the match, Ron Bass. Referee Jerry Calhoun uh, lending aid to Bob Owens as he uh, leaves the ring area. Again, the time, 48 seconds. Let's go over to Lance right now. Yeah, Ron Bass comes up uh, with the winner. Billy! Jerry? Bill Dundee, Jerry Lawler. Um, Subject always of a lot of attention here, Bill. One, huh? Before before we start talking about Wayne Ferris and Larry Latham, we've got a couple of little things we'd like to tell you. Tonight, the superstar is going up to Greenfield, Tennessee. Thursday night, the superstar, the King, and Jerry Jarrett's all going to be in Forest City, Arkansas. Hey, so all them pretty too. little girls come on down and see the three prettiest guys in the Mid-South, right? Now, to get back to old, what's his name, Wayne Ferris? Yeah. He stood out here and never answered your question, did he? He never, he turned around and walked off. That's said, I'll right. answer those Okay. Questions. Well, let me tell you something, Ferris and Latham. You can keep the belt for exactly four weeks because that's what you got for your next title defense is four weeks. They can hide and run and do whatever they want to do. But right now, the belt isn't important. Ferris, I don't like you. And I know your cousin hates you. Larry Latham, you're nothing. All you are to me is a little... What, he looks like Santa Claus, don't he? <laughs> well, come Christmas time, brother, you'll have a job because you're going to be at the wrestling business after Monday night. So you just hang around Memphis, wait for Christmas, put the big red outfit in the big belt. Then they'll give you another belt to hold that big belly in. But this time it's going to be a fight, Lance Russell. And I mean a fight because I done got wound up and I know the king's wound up. And when we get wound up, brother, there's nobody, nothing can stop us. Mm. And that's a fact, Larry Latham and Wayne Ferris. You take a look at the king and the superstar because they're the two guys that's going to put you right out of the wrestling profession. And that's a promise. You know, I got an interesting uh, reaction in there. Uh, Ferris working on the theory that if you say it enough times, maybe you'll convince somebody the big lie routine. Talking about the battle that took place last Monday night, left you guys playing all over the ring. What a wild scene, but I didn't yeah. see you laying there. You were chasing him. That's exactly right. And last Monday night, we picked up just where we left off down in Tupidol. And let me say, you know, you may be right about what he's thinking. If you repeat something enough, you begin, you begin to believe it yourself. Well, what he's repeated in his brain and what Jimmy Valiant drilled in that head of his was that I tried to keep him out of the wrestling business. Let me tell you something, Wayne. Punk Ferris. We'll leave off the rock. You're just nothing but a punk. Let me tell you something, boy. If it wasn't for me, you wouldn't be in the wrestling business. Now, let's get things straight. He came to me one day and he said, hey, King, can you help me? He's teaching school up in some little hick town called Munford, Tennessee. He comes to me and says, can you introduce me to the right people? I said, I'll do that, but that's all I'm doing because if you want to get in wrestling, you make it on your own, son, just like I did. So he did that. I introduced him to the promoters. He got booked. I, I got to admit, he made it in the wrestling business. Then he got with Jimmy Bay, and that boy led him right down the wrong path. He told him, because Van hated me so much, he told him, hey, you need to quit hanging around with your cousin. Get away from him. He don't want you in the wrestling business. He's jealous of you. Well, let me tell you something, punk. Valley had led you down the wrong path, and you done gone too far to turn back now. I don't want you in the wrestling business anymore. You got it right. I'm going to get rid of you. I'm going to get you out of the business, punk. You mess with me one time too many. Come on down there Monday night. Bring that jerk partner of yours, and I'm going to beat the hell out of both of you. Okay, Jerry. Tell you what, I think it's about time we take time out and get back. We've got an exciting tag action match coming up, and we'll be back to that in just a moment. Coco in the ring in pretty good while. Right. Well, Coco was down on the Gulf Coast, it's been around, and uh, picking up some of that experience. 
Dallas Montgomery is uh, right in the process of doing that himself. A young fellow that uh, is getting it, and boy, what a tough team to go against. German team. We haven't seen all that much of the Gestapo, but Hans Schroeder, we know. How about the introductions? This is going to be a match to the expiration of time, introducing at a total weight of 505 pounds from Berlin, Germany. On the left of your screen, Hans Schroeder and the Gestapo, and going against them at a total of 435 pounds from Dallas, Texas, Dallas Montgomery, from Union City, Tennessee, Coco Ware. This match to the expiration of time, referee Jerry Calhoun. Coco, uh, we best remember uh, that great drop kick of his. Boy, yes. he really can get up in the air and lay one on you. He'll be starting in the first fall of an expiration of time match as Hans Schroeder pulls off the helmet and the belt and the riding cop goes and the Gestapo gets ready for it and referee Jerry Calhoun is waiting patiently to uh, see if we can get one of them out of there and get it started against Coco Ware. Gestapo and Schroeder go with Gestapo. Bell time, and here we go, off and running the opening fall. A little further discussion going on between Schroeder and the Gestapo as to how you work against Coco Ware. Coco, real good speed. As we told you, superb drop kick. And nice reversal in there as the Gestapo was coming off the ropes. Coco reversed it on him, hooked the arm, took him right over and down. Gestapo saying he grabbed my mask. Plaintive cry of the guy who was on the deck. You can count on it. Pulled hair, grabbed my mask, grabbed my tights. Once again, Coco showing that speed of his. Coco's tough little fire plug, boy. He's stocky. And again, the Gestapo is down. Coco faked him one way and came back. Hip. Took him over and down. Referee trying to get them to open up their fist in there. Let's keep both of them from getting into a slugging brawl. We've had ourselves enough slugging going on. That was Schroeder talking to the Gestapo. Tangle it up. Neither one being able to get an advantage till Coco went down underneath. Took him right over the top, and once again, he pulled my mask. Tag on Dallas Montgomery. Wait, we were speaking earlier of uh, Eddie Gilbert, Ken Wayne, a couple of guys with real desire. Boy, here's another one of the young breed. Dallas is only uh, like 19, Dave. And... Uh, he has got all the desire in the world himself. He's he's uh, learning quickly. He's uh, developing the moves. He's got good height on him, which in uh, several of the holes, that uh, is an advantage over his opponent. He'll need to fill out a little and put on a little extra beat. Look at him go with Schroeder. Dallas Montgomery waiting for Schroeder to bring it back in. And Schroeder comes back in at the four count from the referee. Schroeder goes in at about 274 himself. And referee Jerry Calhoun saw him pull there and says, break it up. Schroeder, a wrestler that does not have any finesse. He, is, uh, he does not have real smooth moves in the ring. He's just uh, big and tough, mean. I guess when you got the kind of strength and size that he does, you go with that brute force as much as anything. Schroeder down on top of Dallas Montgomery, uh, ostensibly a front face lock, but more than likely, I think we just saw a last part of a chokehold on him. Oh, the knee to the midsection. Tag on the Gestapo. And with a front face lock, Gestapo. Crank it up on Dallas. Referee check. He is, in fact, on the chin. He takes him over and down. Kind of one. That's all. Dallas kicked out nicely. We're at three and a half minutes of this expiration of time match. First fall. This, of course, as you remember on expiration of time, is the team with the most balls. Over the top goes the Gestapo. Big arm drag. Hooks him and takes him right up and down. Dallas, nice move.
Gestapo and Schroeder back into another high-level conference. Referee Jerry Calhoun gets a little tired of waiting, and he counts him out of the corner instead of just stalling, and they're out to a standing side headlock. Oh, believe he slipped a knuckle sandwich in on him. Pounds down with that broad arm to the knee of Schroeder. And right away, Dallas is in trouble. Schroeder from the outside. The referee turns around and says, come on, let him go. Bring it up. Get him out of the corner. Dallas fired across the ring. Knee to the midsection. Drops with the lower leg on Dallas Montgomery, and Coco comes in to add a little assistance. Run out of there now by the referee. Bang, caught him with what appeared to be a right. I couldn't see through Schroeder. And a nice move by Dallas. You had to be watching to catch it. He sprung himself right back to the corner. Tag Coco. There's that drop kick from Coco Webb. Look at him. Put Schroeder down. Gets the Gestapo. Coco battling it out with another drop kick. There's Coco Ware, Union City, Tennessee. Saw him when he first started right here on Championship Wrestling. He's been away and picked him up some experience. Boy, it showed right then and there. He hasn't lost any timing on that drop kick either. The key to the whole thing. Proper timing, and Coco's got it as you just <laughs> saw, time and again. Coco with a monkey. Flips him over. Comes firing back over to take a shot at the Gestapo. Gestapo pulled back. Started through the ropes. Coco turned around to meet him, and now it's back to Schroeder and Ware. We have passed six minutes now in this fall. Pressure points. Schroeder working on the sides of the necks at the pressure point. He is not on the throat, or at least he wasn't. No, nope, he's clear. Ooh, popping right hand. The referee says, come on, Coco. And Schroeder comes back with one. There's the broad arm. Wales Coco across the back. Thanks to Gestapo. That was the old universal inside thumb to the throat. We just saw the Gestapo. The referee didn't see it. Pulls uh, Coco over to the corner. Turns him over to Schroeder. Referee Jerry Calhoun trying to get Schroeder to back it up. Mares him down. Holds on to the side headlock. Center of the ring, Coco trying to pry back out of this one with a Gestapo. Gestapo, a well-built gun. Dallas Montgomery, much too far away to do much good to uh, Coco Ware. They're right out in the center of the ring, and uh, he can't make a tag on him. There's that double cross chop right at the uh, throat. Eight minutes gone, eight minutes gone in the Eight fall. minutes having passed in the action of the first fall of this exploration of time matches. Schroeder comes in, puts the big foot, and Coco comes back with a couple of right hands. Make it three. Coco bangs him again, tags Dallas. Rushes Schroeder to the ropes. And Dallas goes up with a drop kick. Again on a Gestapo. Whip into the ropes. And Dallas didn't catch him full, but caught him enough to get him down. But Schroeder threw him off with relative ease. Coco Ware a tag and back in. Franks the arm up on Hans Schroeder. Oh. 
Long first ball of action with Schroeder going to stop against Ware and Montgomery. And the referee counts Schroeder off the hair. He used it to take him down, Bob. Nine minutes now. At the nine-minute mark, a kip up by Coco. Referee saying, hold it, hold it. And once again, while he was holding it, Schroeder reached up, grabbed the hair. There's a tag on Dallas. Montgomery back in, a tag on the Gestapo. So we have an entirely new set of opponents in. Gestapo. With a vengeance, iron them in. Oh. Front face lock on Dallas. Through the ropes. Mm. Really rattling. Boy, you can hear that yes. one right down to your shoelaces all the way over here. Gestapo really popped him. Whip. Backdrop. Took him all the way. Again to the ropes. And Dallas Montgomery with a foot tanks Coco. Coco with a double-handed chop. Everybody's in the ring now. Referee trying to get him out. He gets Dallas Montgomery out. Coco Ware caught from behind by Schroeder, who is rushed out of the ring by the referee. Well, that's not much rushing, but for Hans, I guess it is. Up on the shoulders. Schroeder, before he went out, dropped the elbow. Montgomery trying to keep him out. There's the backward drive into the mat with a body slam three. Okay, and uh, so the opening fall goes to the team of Schroeder and Gestapo. We'll be back in just a moment. End of time. When we must ring the bell, we just add up the falls that each team has won. The team that has the most falls to their credit then are the winners of the match. And Hans Schroeder and the Gestapo, an important one fall up. It is uh, important because uh, they can now wrestle to a draw. Uh, they, they, don't, they don't necessarily have to get a victory in a second fall. They just have to keep from being pinned. Fall in is all there is to it, as a matter of fact. While they're getting back in the ring, let me remind you folks that all the uh, ticket requests to TV5 Studio Wrestling, please include a stamp self-addressed envelope. I know everybody tells me they put them in there, but we get so many of them that have no stamp self-addressed envelope. They're back in. Coco Ware starts against the Gestapo. Bell time. And here we go, Davey. Coco Ware starting against the Gestapo. That's the way fall one ended. That's the way fall two must begin. Gestapo with a headlock. Big broad arm. Gestapo puts Coco on the mat. Coco and Dallas Montgomery looking very good and a long first fall, but uh, in the end, the Gestapo got the pin on Coco Ware to take that first fall of action. As referee Jerry Calhoun checking, make sure there are no chokeholds going on. Coco trying to power his way out of the headlock. You can do it. But when you have your hair pulled, it's kind of difficult. And that's exactly what happened to Coco. Coco again, forcing his way out of the hole. Almost had it. He was trying to drive the Gestapo down to the mat. But he was yanked back into the headlock. Coco moving around. Breaks out of the hole. Pressure by Coco Ware. <laughs> 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 
Coco gets the tag, and here's Dallas Montgomery, the first time Dallas has been in the second fall. He appeared in the first fall a couple of times, and we had uh, talked about Coco Ware's fine drop kick. Dallas showed a rather respectable drop kick himself against the Gestapo and Hans Schroeder. Dallas makes the tag. Coco Ware coming back in. He's had a little while to get a rest. He goes right to work on the Gestapo side of his foot. Coco makes the tag on Dallas Montgomery. Good tag team moves by Coco Ware and Dallas Montgomery here. That you must keep the fresh man in the ring. Tagging often like that is uh, the way to do it. <laughs> Dallas Montgomery working on the Gestapo. They've been able to keep the Gestapo in there this entire uh, second fall. Three minutes, 22 seconds gone now in the second fall. First fall went to Schroeder and the Gestapo. Dallas with a bar on the left arm. Not a hold you're going to get a pin out of, but certainly one that wears down your opponent. Gets him tired. Maybe make it a little easier to get him in position for a pin. Gestapo trying his best to shake Dallas Montgomery. Dallas hanging on. He's got a good hold set up. He's maintaining. Oh, the Gestapo backs him into the rope. Fires him across the way. Dallas steps over. I got Gestapo rolls it down to the mat. Gestapo makes the tag, and here comes Big Han Schroeder in. Five minutes have expired in the second fall. Schroeder with Montgomery in the air. He body slams him right in the center of the ring. Ooh, drops down right on his head. Cover, one, two, two counts all he gets. Coco there to help out. But I think oh, winding up that left arm, putting a bar on it. And that is not good for Coco Ware and Dallas Montgomery because it's a hole that if the Gestapo can just maintain it for a little less than a minute now. He and Schroeder as the tag team are going to have themselves a victory in this match. Coco has to make an offensive move, trying to go for the pin. 30 seconds to wrestle is all there is to it. Coco and Montgomery look like they're going to have to take a loss on this one because of that first ball. It's Coco, shoulder butt. Gestapo hits the mat. Go for the pin, Coco. He rolls it down. He have it. One, two, no. just a one count. One count is all he got. I thought he might have a chance to get it. Just a count of one. Gestapo. Walks over. Time is...